Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? This is Sick Eric back again with another video, and today we're going to be doing a hands on with the new Samsung One UI uh, with Android Pie on the new Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, as you can see right here. The S9 Plus. Now, this is available for the S9, S9 Plus. Uh, you can sign up for this uh, beta if you go into your Galaxy apps and download the Samsung Plus app. And in there, it'll show you a registration for the beta version. And once you register, all you gotta do is just check for updates. Uh, what I did is I rebooted the phone and then I went to software update and checked for it. And there it was. Keep in mind, it is a big update and it will take a while to download. But this is a beta version, which means pretty much everything does work. There are some things that don't work. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump down into it. So, uh, first thing you're going to notice is when you swipe down, you have new uh, notification area up here. You got a card, and then you have all your your uh, quick toggles right here. You could change these and customize these. Of course, you know your order button and everything. Uh, same functionality as before. It just looks a little bit different. Uh, color wise, it's all just one blue color. Uh, which so far has not changed. It's going to be like this uh, for a while, I guess. But uh, you do also have a white mode to where everything will be in white. This is the night mode, which means everything is dark. Uh, when you swipe on over to the left, you have your Bixby. Of course, there are your cards are now rounded off with a black background. And I usually don't use Bixby. I just set it up for the sake of this video, just to show you guys how everything looks. And this is the new Bixby right here. Um, as well so you click home and this is the uh, new Samsung experience launcher you go into your settings and everything uh, this is how the settings look for the launcher you got your screen layout you got your big card up top uh, when you swipe up it goes away so it's not really wasted space it's just sort of a presentation here's the settings and then you swipe up and it goes away so I heard a lot of people talking about wasted space once you swipe up Everything fits in there just fine. You got your lock home layout, uh, quick notification panels. So when you swipe down, you open up your notifications, swipe up, you got your apps, everything in your app drawer is still side to side. I would like to see uh, up and down scrolling for that, but it is what it is. Uh, you have all your typical uh, Samsung widgets here, you know, all your Google Play widgets, maps. Of course, I have other widgets on here. All your typical Samsung stuff is here. Um, all your Samsung apps are here as well. And this is the Samsung Plus app I was talking about. Click on that and you should be able to sign up for this. For some reason, after the update, the uh, Samsung Plus app keeps crashing. I do not know why. Um, it's just a thing. I've cleared the storage on it, but it could be a bug. But... Um, it does crash after that, so uh, you may not be able to use it after the update. I don't know, it just may be me, uh, but it's just another thing to keep in mind. There are some bugs on this update. Uh, your phone dialer also has a different look to it. It looks more of a clean, stock Android look. You have all your uh, recent, your contacts, everything is at the bottom now instead of being at the top. Uh, it's a lot easier to access. That way, you don't have to reach all the way up top, so that's really, really cool. Really, really nice improvement on the dialer. Uh, you got your camera as well. Everything is at the bottom. You swipe on over, and it takes you to your different modes, which is nice. Uh, scene optimizer, I see that is new. It might be sort of an AI feature uh, for this device to uh, optimize the scene that you're taking a picture of. And your zoom in is also changed from a little tree on over to it's like a little I guess two little trees icons right here to where you can zoom in zoom out um, this is all your settings right here of course you got your big card up top camera settings everything in here is pretty much the same uh, you got your video size you got your tracking you know selfie shape uh, correction quick review shutter sound and about camera so nothing has really changed there your Bixby Vision is up top and your AR Emoji is up top as well. So you could change that. 
and you could use that if you want. This is not finding a face right now. But uh, yeah, that is your uh, camera app right there. You got your photo, you got your video, super slow, uh, slow motion, hyperlapse. I did not see the, uh, where's the pro mode on here? Okay, here's your pro mode. You have all your different settings as well. And then up top, all your settings too. So that is the new camera app for the uh, Samsung One UI. Your uh, Samsung browser, everything is uh, black now. So the theme, the black theme is system wide. Your, your messages will be black, everything. Running Samsung or Samsung app will be black. So that is really, really nice. Let's go ahead and jump into the settings. And of course you greet it with this big card up top. So as far as wasted space, it's not really wasted space because once you scroll up, it goes away. So uh, you're going to go into your connections and this is everything that's in the connection area. As you can see, you got your Wi-Fi, you got your Bluetooth, airplane mode, data usage. Uh, you got more connections, mirror link, you got a download booster, which I don't have a SIM in here, so you can't uh, activate that. But And then uh, that is pretty much all your settings and your connections. Uh, you got your sounds and vibrations. You got your sound mode. You got your uh, vibrate when ringing, ringtone, vibration intensity, use volume, system feedback. Uh, you also take you into your advanced sounds, which is your uh, Adobe Atmos and your equalizer and your adapt sound as well. Uh, upscaler and all of that good stuff. Uh, separate sound app is now all in here. A lot of the, uh, the features and the settings are kind of coupled together um, to make it a little, a lot more easier, a lot more easier to access and to get to. Uh, then you go into your display. You have all your typical display stuff right here. You have your adaptive brightness, which adjusts depending on the uh, condition you're in. Uh, blue light fi filter. You could turn now, schedule, etc. You got your night mode which uh, for some reason a location needs to be turned on um, for it to do it automatically but during the day it should be white at night it should be black but uh, I can't find that setting it might be a bug so I just have it on you got your screen mode typical adaptive brightness uh, your tweaking right here and all of that uh, font size you could change your font your default style you want bold font you could do that as well uh, screen re resolution, of course, it comes default at full HD plus. I uh, went ahead and changed it to the full resolution. Uh, screen timeout, you got your home screen, which will take you back to your home screen settings. Uh, your navigation bar, here's where things get a little bit interesting. You now have full gestures. So when you swipe up in the middle, it'll take you home. Swipe up from the right, take into your recent apps, and then left up, go back. So that's really, really cool. Um, it's, it works pretty well, except like when you have your keyboard open or you have Samsung Pay at the bottom, it'll sort of confuse it to where you're trying to get to Samsung Pay. It'll go up. Um, it's not really 100%, but keep in mind that the uh, one-handed gestures still work on this version. As you can see right there, I swiped to uh, lock the screen. So one-handed one, one -handed operation still works on this. So if you download Good Lock 2018, there are some stuff that you can use, which is, I think, clock face and the one-handed operation you can still use with the new update. So that's pretty cool. Other stuff won't work um, on it. Now let's see where we were at. Uh, the display, that was pretty much it. Block accidental touches, your nav bar. Uh, you could also change the uh, your back button to uh, swap it on over to the other side. You got your hard press home button of course and then you're unlocked with home button you get check that as well so uh let's go ahead and go into wallpapers and themes and like i said wallpapers and themes do not work with this beta version uh, everything is grayed out your themes your wallpaper your icons and your always on displays are all going to be grayed out the only things you could use are your stock wallpapers to come on into the device as you can see right there they are still operational but um yeah, everything else doesn't work. Hopefully they fix that in a future update. Uh, advanced features, you have all your typical stuff right here. Accessories, fast charging, uh, reduced animations. I think this is new. So if you click that, it'll sort of make everything uh, fly by quicker. 
So instead of going into your uh, developer options to turn off animations, you could just do it this way, which as you can see right there, everything is pretty snappy now. So that's pretty nice. Uh, let's go ahead back in advanced features. You got your motions and gestures, your typical stuff right here. Smart stay, uh, smart alert, one handed use, your fingerprint sensor gestures. So when you slide on your fingerprint sensor, it'll bring up your notifications. So all of that stuff we're all used to. Dual messenger, video enhancer, and etc. Uh, you go into device care, which is now device care. It used to be called device maintenance. Uh, this shows all your battery usage, uh, your storage information, and your memory. And you could also optimize everything right here. You got different options to auto optimize and auto restart. So you can set a time to do it automatically and your auto restart also set a time and date to do that automatically as well. So uh, after that, uh, you have your notifications, which have everything on here. You got your status bar, you got your three recent and your all notifications. You got the option to show battery percentage up top and your clock has now moved all the way to the left. So that's really, really cool. I think it looks a little bit more cleaner up top your notification LED as well as all your recently sent. Uh, you, of course you have all your apps right here. Show your system apps. You could un uninstall apps and clear your storage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, your lock screen, you have all your typical lock screen settings right here, always on display. Uh, home button, uh, display mode. So instead of uh, having it always on, you have this new feature to where it's tap to show. So uh, say you want to have your always on display, you just tap it and it'll show your always on display. So that's a pretty cool feature, sort of like what you have on the ambient display of the OnePlus 6T. And your icons on the always on display are now in color. So as you can see, YouTube is red. I believe Snapchat is like purple or something. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I usually always just keep it always on because it's always on display. Uh, you have option for music information. So before... Uh, by default, when you're playing music, it'll show the track and the artist playing at the bottom to where it'll scroll. Now you have the option to turn that off right here. Uh, you have your auto brightness and all of that stuff. Uh, you have your face widgets, uh, your music controller. When you're swiping on the clock on your lock screen or always on display, it'll show all these different items, weather and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you have your clock style, which uh, you could change your always on display, which like I said, good luck. Clock face still does work, as you can see right here. You have all your different options for your different clocks. Uh, and of course, for all your, uh, your lock screen clocks as well, contact information, notifications, and everything. Uh, next thing on the list is biometrics. You still have all your typical iris scanning, face recognition, and fingerprints, uh, security updates. Everything is in this setting as well as far as uh, all your settings for um, intelligent scan and your biometrics to unlock the device and keep it secure. Uh, you got account backups, all your typical stuff, cloud, uh, smart switch, and everything like that. Uh, general management, you know, your typical keyboards and on-screen keyboard, physical keyboard, show keyboard button, and everything right there. Your language, time and date, and reset options. Software update, of course. You could do a software update to download and install. I already did that. As you can see, the last time was the 17th. Uh, you got your about phone as well. Uh, you got your software info. And as you can see right here is one UI. 1.0 Android 9 uh, Samsung Experience version 10.0 so that shows all the information right there uh, let's go ahead and go back and then of course you have your developer options you click on your build number 10 times and you get in there so that is pretty much it with the rundown of the whole UI of the new Samsung One UI for the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus uh, it is just amazing. It looks really nice. Everything looks clean. I love the whole layout. It's just really, really cool looking. Um, I'm loving this whole uh, layout of the new UI. Hopefully everything right here sticks and hopefully all the themes start working. So 
without further with that that's without being said this is the whole you hands-on ui for the new samsung ui for the samsung galaxy s9 plus if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next one peace Thank you.